today we're going to use some of our garden tomatoes and make a tomato soup. These larger ones, I'm just going to barely do a crisscross on when I put them down in there. And that way I know that it'll be easier to peel them. And you don't have to because it's going to peel off anyway. Okay, so let's do the big ones first and then we'll do the all the smaller ones together. How's that? Look, this is already peeling off. I need to get my cold water ready. Come here, tomato. Okay, the reason you take them out of the real hot water and drop them into the cold water is so that they stop cooking, okay? And that way your tomatoes stay pretty and round and keep their shape. And that is, of course, if you're going to can them whole, which we will be doing, uh, which I might can a few of my smaller ones whole. Um, these are so doggone big, I'm only going to be able to get four in here. All right, there's my pot. I'm going to throw it in there. I don't even know if y'all can see that, but as for now, i got to hurry. These are better boy tomatoes that we grew out in the garden, of course. We don't have a big garden uh, because we actually live in a subdivision. So, um, we don't live out in Colored Valley where I grew up. The boy, uh, my youngest brother does, but my, and my daddy still does. Um, but I don't. So, we have a very small garden. But it produces, you know, gardens produce. It's amazing what you can grow on one little bitty piece of land. Well, that's a pretty one. It didn't hardly have a thick rind in it. These are so pretty and, and uh, have been, like I said, I have not had to throw any away. We'll strain it before we serve it, okay? So there's our tomatoes. That's all that's going in is the tomatoes. And then I probably got, um, I don't even know how much this thing holds, but we'll look. See if it says, it don't, it don't really, I think it says on the inside. It's a couple of cups and it's got a beef bouillon in it. So we're gonna mix this up with the wire whisk and add it to the soup. So this is the beef bouillon going in. We're gonna turn this on high. Okay. Now we're going to put in Okay, this is a half teaspoon of pepper, black pepper. And then I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of salt. Now I don't know if y'all if y'all know this or not, uh, but even the chef that we were working with apparently don't know this. But scientifically, because I've read up on it, and I know what I'm talking about. Scientifically, sugar does not reduce the acid in tomatoes. It only makes it taste less acidic. Sugar does not take it out. The acid still goes in your body, and it still affects you for reflux and that kind of stuff. The only thing that's going to take out the acid, the acidity, truly, is baking powder. Okay? So if you want to put a little baking powder in your tomato soup, you can, or in your sweet tea or whatever. That's what baking powder actually does scientifically. It really reduces the acid. Sugar does not. It just makes it taste less acidic. Now, if you don't believe me, look it up. This is onion powder. Okay, I'm going to put in a whole teaspoon. Now, I have something new called Guacamole Lighthouse Blend. And this stuff is good. And yes, I'm going to put just a little bit in my soup. I'm going to put like a half a teaspoon in here. Okay. 
And we're going to bring this to a boil. I'm going to put the lid on it. And we're going to cook it for a minute while we make some croutons. And Let's smash them a little, mash them up. the holes in the bottom of this. This is just a um, colander that you make like broccoli steamed vegetables in. Now some of these seeds will go through but the the real hard part of the tomato is not going to go through and right now I'm just letting the liquid go through and then we're going to mash it. And if I had one of them old-fashioned triangular things we'd use it but I don't so I ain't. It is what it is, what it is. You just make do with what you got. So just use your a masher. This is a uh, potato masher. Most of y'all probably got one of these. Mostly. Get you a spoon. And let me get through there. This is the thick part, the good stuff. So you gotta be patient when you're doing a when you're doing a soup and you're straining it. Whether you're making like a split pea soup or like a tomato soup like this, um, you just gotta be patient. And we want some of this good uh, thick tomato part so you kind of have to just smash it through uh, just keep going because that's the good stuff now you can reduce this as much as you want to because it has the beef bouillon in there and the water so it's totally up to you. The more you cook it, the thicker it's going to get. I'm going to bring y'all up at eye level so y'all can see what's coming through the strainer. All the good pulp part. And you want that in there. You don't want to just get rid of all of it. Because I've already strained it. And I don't want to waste it. Okay, so look, I'm going to take cornstarch, and I'm using cornstarch because we're going to eat all this tonight, and I ain't going to have to reheat it. Cornstarch actually um, is smooth and clear, it's, it's actually clear and stuff, so it's going to make your tomato soup stay pretty. Um, I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons. Heaping. Heaping. I really don't need that much. Probably a teaspoon and a half heaping. And then we're going to put our milk in here. And this is skim milk, y'all. And then I put it, a lid on it and I shake it really, really good. You can see all that powder comes right off the bottom. And don't be lazy about it. Make sure you shake it good, because if you don't, you're going to have lumpy, ugly soup after you spend all this time making it pretty. Okay? Let's pour this in there. You know what would be really good in here, y'all? And we're going to do it. 
because we can. A pat of butter. And some people like cheese, but I'm not going for the cheese because we're on a diet. We had cheese on our pizza today, okay? So I'm just putting in a pat of butter. Not a lot of butter, but just a pat of butter. Then we're going to taste it again and make sure it doesn't need any more salt. I guess I could put just a tiny teaspoon of sugar in here just to please some of y'all. So we'll do that. Look how little this is. This is really like a half teaspoon. Not a whole teaspoon. I don't like it to be sweet. I think tomatoes are already sweet. Now, a lot of y'all might think, you know, chives and all that, but that guacamole seasoning that we put in here when we were boiling and cooking our tomatoes had a lot of spice and flavor in it. All right, let's just dip us up some tomato soup, y'all. Out of our garden tomatoes. I don't know how much of this y'all can see and how much of this y'all can't see. Let me back y'all up just a little bit. These new refrigerators don't make near enough ice, do they? So, um, I am going to put just a little pat of sour cream. They're making these sour creams in these little squeeze things, and y'all, I just love them. They're so convenient. <laughs> y'all seen it go in. And we're going to put our homemade croutons on the top. And if I were taking a picture, I'd put a sprig of uh, something on there, but I'm not taking a picture. But I know how to make bigger women look better. Of course, we look good anyway. I think we look way better than skinny women. Um, let me taste this. I think Chris is so good looking on that TV show. If y'all haven't watched that show, y'all should watch it just to see how cute Chris is. Oh my gosh, is he cute. All right, I'm going to stir this up and take a bite. I told him last night, I said, you are so handsome on that TV show. He looks good on TV. It's good, y'all. It's a delicious, delicious supper. And I know it's not a meal fit for a king or a, a big guy or whatever, but it's perfect for me when my husband is in Florida. And I want something fresh out of the garden. This is just perfect. I love it. And tonight I'll eat popcorn before I go to bed. The croutons are spot on. Good, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed Colored Valley Cooks. Those croutons are so good, I'm going to eat them first. I hope you've enjoyed Colored Valley Cooks and me cooking in here in the kitchen. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.